Hi, but thank you so much for being on my channel uh, and taking out time. I know you are already juggling with a lot of things. <laughs> so thank you so much for taking out time. Thanks, thanks so much, Sukhat, for having me. Yeah, so uh, for a start, if you would like to give a bit of your introduction yourself. Okay, so from my side, uh, hey folks, folks who don't know me, my name is Arpit. I love exploring entire domain of engineering, be it around core engineering, be it software engineering. I just love exploring it. That's the only thing I know. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been in industry working for last eight slash ten years, if you count masters or not, depending on that. Uh, I graduated mm -hmm. in 2012 uh, from the government college in Pune, then did my masters mm -hmm. from IIIT Hyderabad, effectively started my career in 2015. Uh, mm. I was part of, like, I joined Practo Amazon Unacademy. At Unacademy, I was there for five years. Uh, mm -hmm. I joined as an IC, left as a director. So seen mm. both sides of the <laughs> spectrum, uh, seen mm. well, like like worked as an engineer, worked as a leader. Now uh, basically mm. very recently made a switch to Google, uh, working on some mm. good projects there. And but apart from that, built my programming language, built my database, built so many prototypes. So I just love mm. exploring this entire domain. So all in all, a nerd that if you like mm. core computer science, you'd love talking to me. Simple. I've seen your YouTube channel, you are doing a great job, like going de into depth of topics. So today also we have chosen a similar in-depth, a topic in which we can go quite in-depth. So we are going to compare the SQL and NoSQL databases. There are a lot of myths in the, I see that people just give a small differences, but th I think they are not enough. Mm -hmm. and there are a lot of things to explore. So yeah, so what are your views on this? <laughs> uh, so... It's something that I can rant about for hours. <laughs> what 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 uh, what a lot of YouTubers say. What what people think no sequels are. There are so many misconceptions floating around. First of all, whenever I yeah. uh, speak to someone, it's like, ah, I'll use no sequel because sequel doesn't scale. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what sequel doesn't scale? Since when did this happen? So yeah. uh, this is the most most popular misconception that mm. it's not about that a particular kind of database doesn't scale. It depends mm. that a kind of database doesn't scale with a particular constraint. If you mm. drop that right. constraint, it would scale. And this is mm -hmm. something that I keep telling every single person I meet who's, who, who wants to talk to me about SQL versus NoSQL. So that's okay. the common thing. Mm -hmm. Let, then mm -hmm. this is where I feel we all need to understand that what makes a database database. It's the mm -hmm. underlying storage engine of the database. Yeah. Right? Right, right. And right. given that the flexibility of the storage engine, like it, so depending on what storage mm -hmm. engine the database use and how mm -hmm. you are exploiting it, you will get that mm -hmm. kind of performance out of it. Right? If yeah. I talk about NoSQL database, with uh, NoSQL mm -hmm. database, what typically happens is people say it doesn't scale or, or sorry, with SQL databases, people say it doesn't scale. But hmm. instead of asking that, it should be more about why is NoSQL database able to scale? It's, yeah. it's basically right. by default sharded and whatnot. Right? Mm -hmm. So yes, yes, why yes. is SQL not sharding? If you shard SQL, mm. it would scale. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> and the kind of performance you would get on single node depends on the storage engine that's there. Right. So mm -hmm. it all depends, to be honest. But it's all about how well you know the database that you are working with. So that you can tune mm -hmm. those parameters and get the max out of it. So yeah, we can dive deep into each one of this. So have yeah. a lot of experience mm. <laughs> doing and managing yeah, yeah. things and hitting uh, and shit hitting the fan in production. So been there, done that, seen yeah. that. Yeah. So I think let's first start mm. with uh, SQL databases, mm. their internal structure. Like you talked about, like we should know about how are things happening on a single node mm -hmm. when a database is on a single node. So what are the internal structure what is the internal mostly data structure of a sql database how is the data actually stored on the disk it's a it's a it's a it's a very common belief that uh sql databases use b plus tree to store the data yeah not mm -hmm. true <laughs> okay <laughs> let's start with that okay it's not true okay so b plus tree is one of the implementation right yeah but mm. you can change the storage engine so by the way you can write your own storage engine within three hours Right? It's mm -hmm. not that difficult. Okay. It, you just need to write a bunch of C++ code, implement a bunch of methods, and you can write your own MySQL storage engine. MySQL okay. documentation itself has exact steps through which you can write your own storage engine. So now what you can okay. do is instead of, mm -hmm. let's say, you storing data in B plus tree, 
you change mm-hmm. it and keep data in memory what's mm-hmm. the problem right. with that nothing you mm-hmm. store the data in raw csv file right mm-hmm. so now but the most common out of the box uh, things that come out of uh, like like basically when you install mysql is the mm-hmm. engine it may be my ism mm-hmm. engine or it could okay. be the inodb engine right mm-hmm. now these two uh, popular implementations they store data in b plus tree so that's why a okay. lot of people say and it i'm mm. talking with respect to mysql but it's true for all yeah. that uh, yeah, a lot yeah. of databases uh, the default engine that they start with they store the data mm. with respect like they store the data in b plus tree on mm. that disk which is why people in a very general sense think that sql mm-hmm. databases store data in b plus tree but Yeah. Again, it depends <laughs> where the data is stored, depending on the storage engine, right? Okay. And mm-hmm. uh, the reason the data they store in B plus three because it gives you mm. log and lookup to mm, no right. matter which row you are accessing, and mm-hmm. which is what makes it ultra special. That mm-hmm. no matter which row, the, it basically is improving your pointed lookups when you are mm. uh, looking up a particular row by a particular ID. you would get mm-hmm. order log and time reads and okay. which is exactly what you need from your database to have predictable performance mm-hmm. right? and which Got is it. why yeah. most commonly uh, b plus tree is used as an implementation uh, thing for a normal relational database yeah okay so and now coming to the no sql databases mm. so like like you mentioned that the in- underlying engine can be same for both sql Correct. and no sql yeah so for no sql databases uh, what is the mostly commonly used data structure so the best and the worst part of a no sql database is that there is no standardization <laughs> so with relational database so a database cannot claim to be a relational database if it does not support acid if it does not support mm. rows and tables or oh, sorry yeah. basically rows and columns columns but no sql says hey we don't follow any standardization depends hmm. i can be key value store i can be graph i can be document i can document. be data warehouse i can be columnar i can be anything right yeah. so now what is no sql so if i would if i were to put all the all sorts of databases on a landscape i can see that hmm. sql only accounts for 5% of database but it still hmm. rules the industry right yeah, and there yeah. are plethora of databases that solve very niche problems hmm. and they do it really well right. so which means mm-hmm. that someone who wants to solve or who wants a solution to a particular kind of storage slash access pattern would have mm-hmm. to pick that kind of database so there is no okay. one answer with sql you can generalize to some extent and say ki b plus tree is used but with mm-hmm. no sql you cannot do that with no sql mm-hmm. you have to be you have to be in the position that say ki hey i want this kind of use case i am using this kind of database so now what is the underlying storage of that because there is no okay. standardization because mm-hmm. if it was standardized then like sql has a sql layer through which we query no sql would also mm-hmm. have something like that but there is nothing because there is no standard mm-hmm. it is very open yeah? mm-hmm. so depending on the needs that you have you would see that kind of storage engine so key value was okay. different document db would have different graph database would have different right uh, mm. uh, columnar okay. db would have totally different and now uh, yeah. there is a plethora of databases which venture into decentralized database category they are different mm-hmm. there are hybrid databases there are uh uh n- new sql databases so many okay. are right <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then in memory cache mm-hmm. and those worlds are different totally mm-hmm. right so yeah. it depends <laughs> Perfect, so yeah. if we uh, consider like suppose mongodb for an example mm. i am not sure data structure it uses to store the data the highlight of any document db is mm-hmm. that it is very close to relational database so document db mm. make it simpler for people to migrate from relational to non relational world right yeah, yeah, yeah so right. document dbs are very close to the functionalities that relational databases provide with a bit of mm. change in their modeling layer right even mm-hmm. i am not sure about a lot of internals on mongodb uh the hmm. engine that they use is called as wire tiger for the open source yeah, version wire so hmm. i have it bookmarked for a very long time that i want to dive deep into uh those internals but i didn't get time hmm. but if i do it will be there on my channel hopefully someday <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, like we talked about so it is possible for a no sql database to also have a b plus c data structure right 100% yeah yeah, yeah. so now uh, suppose we have two databases sql and no sql both have the same underlying data structure mm. which is the b plus trees mm. 
So what differentiates them on the top level? The thing that differentiates them are the guarantees that they offer. So okay. when a database developer or a, mm-hmm. or a database researcher actually conceptualizes a database, he or mm-hmm. she would conceptualize it in order to solve a particular problem. Mm-hmm. so to target that particular niche now depending on which he or she would decide ki hey i need a b c but i don't need d mm-hmm. e f so now okay. because there is no standardization per se in case of no sql mm-hmm. the thing the, the beautiful thing is that it depends on the database developer on what kind of constraints mm-hmm. he or she would want to drop and what he or she would want to gain so it's very okay. much possible that you might just create an embedded database and not worry about mm. a centralized db like for okay. example that is how rocks db level db were conceptualized that i, I want mm-hmm. an embedded database i don't want a centralized database right but mm-hmm. some database developer thought ki hey uh, i'll store everything in ram i don't want mm-hmm. to store anything in disk it can be used as a cache and which is how basically redis forked out so now mm-hmm. it really does not matter what underlying a uh, storage engine it is or or how the data is actually stored mm-hmm. on the disk or in memory okay the kind mm-hmm. of guarantees that the database would need to offer would depend on mm-hmm. the kind of niche it wants to operate in right okay. i don't totally depend mm-hmm. on that like some databases would be distributed some database would be centralized some databases mm-hmm. would be embedded right mm-hmm. and it and it right. totally depends on that so because of which uh you are expected to know a lot about databases because mm-hmm. there are hundreds of options to choose from mm, yeah, and right. then that becomes mm. an next big problem kare how to pick one over other <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah so uh, mm. like at what level is the change comes like the data is stored in the form of json format and the data is stored in the form of rows and columns format so mm. actual the way we see it it is in the form of that but internally it is in the form of a b plus tree for example mm-hmm. so uh, at what layer does this distinction and mapping happens ah, okay great question so what happens is it really does not matter like in uh, in any database implementation a database mm-hmm. typically comprises of 5 to 6 independent abstracted layers so first okay. is how it accepts the query then how it mm. parses the query then how it mm. optimizes the query then how it creates an evaluation of that query then how it actually okay. evaluates the query and then how it talks to the underlying storage layer and then the actual mm. storage layer itself right mm-hmm. now there are mm. many layers and it, and each one of them has an uh, each one of them has a contract right? mm-hmm. and you can literally plug out one and put in your implementation which is why at mm-hmm. the at, at the at the beginning of our discussion i said that you can literally write mm-hmm. your own storage engine and basically plug it with mysql mysql okay so mm. where these things alter is mm. in most cases mm-hmm. a database or a person who is conceptualizing a database would want to make it really easy for people to absorb their database mm. which is mm-hmm. why you would see uh, json as a json as a very 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 preferred format for people yeah. to build database mm-hmm. so basically firebase mm-hmm. is using almost json mm. uh basically mm. mongodb is pura json based but internally mm-hmm. mongodb is not storing json it is storing json it is basically binary mm. form of json yeah right right, right you right. may have mm. a column on a db that is storing mm. data in a b plus tree node in which json mm. is 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 basically stored maybe let's say a uh, an hyper compressed protobuf format you can very mm-hmm. well do that no one stopping you from doing it right mm-hmm. so the way this distinction comes in that Mm. where it starts to land up the idea is pretty simple at every layer keep that abstraction mm. handy so that you can literally okay. plug and play and make your database better right mm-hmm. now here whenever a no sql database developer when would think it was mm. all about what problem are we solving because mm. a database is as performant as its storage layer okay because if you are able to fast read or do fast write read. Hmm. because if you are doing let's say a time series db you need to store mm-hmm. it in a certain way so that those kind of queries are very optimized right optimized, because yeah. for time series databases it would be like you need to have a op- very efficient range based queries mm-hmm. right plus right. there would be millions of data points which means mm-hmm. you can do run length encoding and a bunch of compressions on that so mm-hmm. your data structure your on disk data structure would have to mm-hmm. be optimized for that 
right okay. this is the Got first it. level of distinction that comes in that the problem that my database would try to solve your mm-hmm. underlying structure needs to solve that problem really well right mm. that is why okay. but it does not dictate what end user sees because mm. you can write a right. layer that converts this into something which is usable by by user. your or rather which is basically easily consumable by the consumer mm-hmm. right right but mm. the storage engine is the most 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 important layer of the database okay. whatever suits your mm-hmm. need you go that but right? mm-hmm. but then your database if you expose the complexities of your storage layer at the top mm. then mm-hmm. things would go buzzard because they might not know encoding and run compression and what not yeah. so they have to make it very simple so mm. you may see json okay. at the top but beneath the lines it's all messy highly compressed way of storing things Right. Okay. So, so yeah. So, so what would a node of a SQL database contain? Like B plus T node, if we consider a single leaf node. Okay. In a contain, s- yeah. in a relational database like Mong- uh, like uh, MySQL or Postgres, it would contain yes. the exact row that you are storing. Okay, complete row. The okay. complete row is stored in the B plus T node, right? Okay. Literally, because in SQL or in mm-hmm. uh, specifically in case of let's say MySQL or Postgres, the mm. all the columns are having fixed widths, right? Mm-hmm. So it would exactly right. know. how much data it would or how many bytes would it require to represent one row and that's okay. how it would determine the size of the b plus tree node it would need node. it would need n minus 1 uh, it would in basically n plus 1 pointers to store the child and the mm-hmm. left and the right and you link them uh, right, apart right. from that the actual data would be stored in the b plus tree node it may not be one row it may be 3 mm. 4 5 6 10 15 rows so how many rows it can fit it would fit into that but given that it's a fixed okay. width You would mm. exactly know how many rows fit in one node of your B plus tree that you are storing. B plus tree. That's exactly Got what it. is stored on disk in a B plus tree node. Okay. And in the case of something like MongoDB, it will be complete document. It will be completely document, which is binary encoded form that is exactly stored. Mm. But obviously, not one document, one file. You may build mm. a database that stores one document as one file. But what MongoDB would mm. do is it basically merges them or mm. a bunch of documents uh, stored in a certain format and then indexes. So it would have its own indexing scheme. It would have its own something very mm. similar to B plus three. May not be exactly B plus three, but something very similar mm. to that that gives them very predictable reads and writes okay. and efficient access. Mm. So now we are, as we are talking about indexing only. So let's talk about how indexing would happen for a SQL database mm. and a non-SQL database. Okay. So indexing concept, irrespective of its SQL or non-SQL, it's exactly mm. the same. same. There is no difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The idea of indexing is to make reads faster. Mm-hmm. The way you make reads faster is by making the amount of data you need to look up smaller, right? Mm. So, for example, if you don't have any indexes, you do mm. obviously that's how humans would also do. If you don't have like if you have a gigantic word dictionary and there are mm-hmm. no indexes and you are looking for something, you would literally and if the words are randomly ordered, right? Yeah, then you would literally go word by word to find your word, and once you find, you get the meaning. That's exactly what your database is also doing, right? Yeah, scanning, right? Mm. But then the mm. next step, you say, "Hey, let me just order it by primary key in the word dictionary. Mm-hmm. It is word. Your order by word. Mm. So now you know how you go. But there is no index, so you mm-hmm. still go line by line or word by word. But at least you know, okay, okay, this is where I would find that word. Mm-hmm. but then comes indexing which says that hey all a start from here all b start from here all c start from here okay that mm-hmm. is exactly your index so mm-hmm. the indexed value and the offset is what you store in the index right okay and now the size of this index would be what if you are, if you are talking about word dictionary as an example there would be 26 mm-hmm. entries each mm-hmm. entry would have a character and a page mm-hmm. number right so mm-hmm. the indexed value in our case it is 1 byte and okay. offset which is integer so 4 byte each entry mm-hmm. is what how much 5 bytes there mm-hmm. are 26 entries so 26 into 5 whatever that is like 120 130 something right so mm-hmm. 120 bytes so that's your index size okay this you can fit in ram right mm-hmm. so next time the word lookup comes in that hey i am looking for cat so you mm-hmm. would do this you are loaded in in memory hash table you mm-hmm. go to c find this page number you go to that and you start mm. doing a linear scan there okay. right so what we mm-hmm. created is a sparse index mm-hmm. right okay. where you are not mm-hmm. having all the entries all the words over here because you wanted mm-hmm. to keep the index size smaller 
<laughs> but then you can create a dense index where all mm. the words that you have you are storing all the words in your index mm. and let's say if there are let's say 700000 words right mm. so 700000 into 5 right okay. those mm. much those many bytes would be got which turns out to be 3.5 mb right so your mm-hmm. index size become 3.5 mb and mm. uh, your uh, so which holds this thing that this word is present at this page at this offset right mm-hmm. so that is exactly what you store in index so okay. no matter what which database you are using the concept of mm. indexing would remain same either you have a sparse index or a dense index or a hybrid of both mm. right yeah but right. the idea is to make lookups faster so that you can mm-hmm. go to that location as fast as you can mm-hmm. got it so in both like we can choose the key we want to make the index Correct. on in both the types of yeah and on the base of that it will create the index got it so now one question which might come in a lot of people's minds is why are we not able to do joins in a nosql database but we are able to do that in sql database even if the data structure in which they are stored is the same 